Hello, everybody. We Rabbit here, and welcome back to the Otaku Overload Podcast, episode twenty. That's right, the big two zero. We have already been doing this for twenty weeks in a row, which is really nice. Uh, oh yeah, last week we did not have the podcast. We had warned you guys because I knew Legend of Jonathan said he was going to be out of town. He was going to have a little bit of a family trip, which is cool. Um, so that postponed the podcast for a week, but we're back now, which is awesome. I guess we're first things first to start the podcast off. How did your little trip with your uh, family go? Did you have a good time? Let's just jump in. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay. I thought maybe you're going to talk more about the trip, but I, I guess maybe you don't want to, you know, personal details. I guess that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because the food was pretty good. The food was pretty good though. I'll admit, like, um... You know, we we went to like this local town where like my mom grew up and stuff, and the food was pretty good there. Um, it was a lot though. It was like like the like the plates are like like because like I ordered like um chili cheese fries, like it would even be like a small plate. It would basically be like three plates in one plate, basically. Nice. That's what it feels like. So it's like a bunch of them. Nice. And then That's cool. uh, then we went to a park and I saw squirrels and. You know, I don't really see squirrels where I live. So, like, the mm. thing is, it's super cool seeing them. So, I was like, oh, look so at this. Good food, nice wildlife, that sort of thing. Yeah. Nice. So, that sounds fun. Like I said, I, I, I get it. Maybe you don't want to put you know, too much personal details, but it's still pretty cool. And I was yeah. just saying, it's nice that you had a good time. That's good. It's good to hear. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, with that being said, then, let's dive into our weeks. I didn't have too much of a week, which... You know, I'll talk about later, but I know you said you had some things to talk about, so go ahead and you know get started. Oh up. yeah, I have like, because I mean, let's be honest too. Like, there's a lot that I want to talk about, you know. So, um, first things first, you know, um, I said for a while that I wasn't going to talk about Earth Say because, like the original plan was, they said the David Productions they said they were going to be dragging out. The entirety of the the remake of Earth say for a, an exactly a year. Like there was no delays, there was no plans for next year, there was no plans for anything. It was just one season, one year. That was it. Oh. You know exactly. That's literally what they said from the start. Um, basically, what happened was that no, that's not going to be the plan anymore. They are going to postpone it until twenty twenty four. And so, you know, it is for me, I feel like it's a good thing that they're going to drag it out more. But at the same time, I do wish that they kind of finished it within that one, like the time limit. Because the thing is that, like, I don't really see it being something that has to be dragged on even for a year. But at this point, I feel like the series is so short and it's so, like, simplified that I feel like you could just drag it on for, like, a year exactly. And there wouldn't really be much else to show you know what i mean like Mm. like it's like tom and jerry where they have like a a new series and it's for a year it's like that i don't really see them having to make like you know last it for like years i see it like it could just last one year and i would be fine with it you know and so yeah especially uh, since this is the anniversary year right mm -hmm, last year was the anniversary yeah Yeah, yes you feel like it could have just been you know just do all the episodes you're gonna do and then get it done and then just move on sort of thing instead of like, oh, mm-hmm. it's going to do some episodes and then there's going to be a break and then we're going to do like the rest of the episodes or a second season or whatever. Yeah. So, um, you know, this first season, you know, it's over. The last two episodes were pretty great. I remember uh, what's crazy is that in the last episode, um, well, the episode before that, it was more like a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids type of episode because Lum gets shrunken. And basically from there, like, Ataro tries to, like, turn her back into a full-grown person. She does turn back into a full-grown person, and you get this, like, emotional scene where you can tell Ataro, like, he's happy to see her back to her normal height and, like, stuff. So you see, like, the the, the relationships building more. Um, and the last episode was cool is basically there's, like, a whole entire thing where there's a bunch of fighting and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, the point is that basically at the high school, they have a competition between all the girls and so basically, um, Lum, Sakura, not the one from Naruto, guys, not the one from Naruto, just so you guys clarify. Yeah, <laughs> that, uh, yeah can you imagine? Just not the I one from Naruto. Sakura. I don't think people know. <laughs> um, yeah, I know everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. So basically, she was, you know, um, you know, the nurse. Yeah, she's there. Shinobu's there. And then Ryonosuke's there. The reason why Ryonosuke's there is because. 
basically she joined because you know she's a girl and stuff and she was excited because basically since they were doing it for like a charity and because they wanted money and a bunch of stuff and you know being the typical anime thing where they're like oh yeah we have to dress up in a bikini and stuff she was excited because she wanted to dress oh, yeah. more feminine. In, in, yeah. in, anime, in anime, they always have to come up with some sort of crazy, get you know, like money, um, money. We call it earning scheme. Mm-hmm. So basically, they were like, "Yeah, like, like." She's like, "I'm so excited because I get to finally like wear a bra and like underwear, like as like a girl, basically like a bra- bikini." And then the dad's like, "No, no, 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 no. That's not good," or something like that. And she's like, "What? What do you want, man?" And he's like, no, you need to wear your 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 um like like the thing that she puts on her chest, like the the, the bandages or whatever. Cause she's like, if you fight in that, it'll be definitely perfect for fighting. And she's like, you know what? You're you're right, old man. And then she shows up and she like wears like the thing, but like it actually fits because the point is that you know it helps so that it doesn't get in the way, you know. So oh, like wow. that's like, so yeah, at the same time, that's like the only time where like the, the old man, he's actually like doing a good job instead of being a freaking like you know gender swapping all the time but um basically what happens is that ran since she's so like um you know she's always jealous of lum she's always doing she's always being like vegeta where she's always jealous and always trying to fight and a bunch of stuff she basically does is she steals all the other girls energy by kissing them so that basically she can be strong enough to fight against lum but the thing is that she was stupid because basically the competition wasn't that they were going to fight against each other. It was that basically they were going to have to fight against a bunch of random zoo animals or something like that. What the hell? And they were all buff. <laughs> they were all buff for some re- weird reason. And so basically, like, all the girls get beat up. There's a part where Sakura, she gets, like, That's attacked totally by... That's totally fair. Just make all the girls fight freaking wild animals. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, um, Ataro, he's reading the, the thing. He's like, thanks thanks to our sponsor, the, the Tomobiki um, Wildlife Zoo, because they donated all these animals for this charity, and blah, blah, blah. And you look at all these animals, and they have, like, spandex on, and they have a bunch of stuff. <laughs> That's so weird, yeah. right? And then they're, they, look so all, they're like all, they look all ready to, like, freaking wrestle. And then, yeah, freaking, since everyone's all weak, they're losing easily. And then Sakura's, like, wrapped up by, like, a freaking anaconda but of course they had to like you know sexualize it so she's like oh like get off of me and then that's when like it's like oh god oh jeez. yeah so basically like ran she's all scared because you know she didn't expect it to go that way she gives everyone back their energy they all beat up the um, animals and then basically what happens is that no one gets the money and ataru's the one that wins all the money in the end and then what's weird is that because um Basically, Ataru's an idiot and he falls on top of Lum. He he kind of blushes and he kind of like, you know, you know, he ends up liking her basically again. You know, he starts yeah. falling again. And so that's when she's like, let me guess. Like, am I the person that captured your heart? Blah, blah, blah. And then that's, he's like, no, no. And that's like, like he runs away. And that's how the season ends, basically. That's silly. But yeah, I get it. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm excited for season two, but I still wish you know it was more quicker. Obviously, yeah, it like, sounds. I, I was looking it up as you were talking. Um, yeah, the second season isn't going to come out until somewhere in 2024. That's what I was saying. That it doesn't come out until next year. Yeah, so, so I can see just, what you mean. That it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I want to just watch it, get it done with. It sucks. I'm have to wait like a whole year just to, like watch the rest of it. I, I can see what yeah, you mean. Yeah, like. Because, like, right now, it'd be cool because, like, right here, right now, I'm, like, you know, I'm in high school, so, like, I just want to kind of be, like, okay, like, junior year, and then maybe by the time I watch second season, it's, like, senior year. But then if it's, like, somewhere in 2024, somewhere, not even, like, beginning of 2024, middle of 2024, by the time I get this out, I probably can be, like, in college or something by that point. So it's, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm watching this one, it's, like, practically, like, two years later, you know? For school yeah, years, you know. Yeah, especially if it's delayed for some reason or something. I got yeah, you. so it, it freaking sucks. But um, you know, I can't wait. In the meantime, I'm just gonna watch. I'm gonna read the manga and try to finish up the original series, and try mm. to finish that because you know, like I never finished the original anime. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and yeah, you know, that's all the Earth say stuff I have to talk about. But I do have something else to talk about. I did watch the final episode of Pokemon. Oh, the uh, what do you call it? Aim to be a master. Yes, the, I was um, about to get to the title. Yeah, the, aim to the, be the um conclusion for like 
Pikachu and Ash's arc or whatever. Yeah. No, it's Pokete Monsta, uh, <laughs> Masame, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Pokemon, get to this. Okay. Um, but basically, yeah, I watched it. I give it like, like if I was to rate it from like one to like zero to 10, I would give like, because, you know, it was, it wasn't that great. Either, eight or you five. Know? <laughs> like a five or six around there. The reason why is because like, there's some stuff that's like, you know, it's cool. It's just the, the premise just kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Like, like literally Pidgeot show, cause that's the thing, you know, by this point, you know, so basically if you guys don't know, Pidgeot shows up. But what sucks is that, like, he shows up, and then the Pidgeys and the Pidgey Odos and everything show up, and then Ash is like, oh, cool, Pidgey, oh, you're here. And then he's like, yeah, I'm here. And then he's like, do you want to join my party? And he, like, shakes, he nods his head, and then he leaves with Ash. So it's like, do these guys just not need him anymore? Like, so it was just super weird that, like, the the Pidgeys and they yeah, just don't need him anymore. I feel like that's kind of the way it works with all his Pokemon main appearance. It's like, they show up just by circumstance and say, hey, you're, it's you, my Pokemon from the past. How are you? The Pokemon's happy to see him. And then it's kind of like, do you want to join my party? <laughs> either that or they just continue doing what they're doing. It's kind of like, well, it's cool that I ran into you, I guess. Yeah, like this whole, like literally they, they did was basically Team Rocket. They joined back up again. Well, yeah, if I remember, because um, there was some overlap here. That's something I watched as well. Did they ever explain how they even got back together? Like oh, after, no. like, after okay. like such a dramatic, oh, it's over, they'll walk away. Didn't it seem like it's just That's kind right. of I was off, out. off screen. It's just like, oh, they're just back together. No, I was about to explain it. Basically, these dumbasses, they all met up to capture Ash and Pikachu. Meowth was the first one to come up with that plan. Then you see in the distance that Jesse's coming up with that plan too. Like she's there. And then you see James. And then basically all three of them bump into each other and they start crying. And they're like, oh, I knew we would all come up with the same plan. And they start crying. And that's how they make up. That's how they make up. I don't know, but that's what I'm saying. But like, it's like you guys were never even like broken up, were you? Like, no, you they were actually... mad at each other, supposedly. It was I don't super know. stupid. It, it just felt like it was very like, what? Like, so you guys for no reason just just got mad, walked off, and then came back together because you guys all had the same plan, and you guys forgave each other. But like, were you guys ever even mad in the first place? Like, it just seemed yeah. very like it seemed very under the rug. It seemed like why was that even there? Is what I'm saying. It felt very yeah. It's because the writing was just bad by this point. It got really like oh, as I was gonna say, did we ever talk on camera or was it during maybe the Kingdom Hearts? It was the Kingdom how... Hearts, yeah. Yeah, it's really disappointing. If everyone's wondering why this last 11th episode little mini series or whatever felt very unconclusive, it didn't really like tap any loose ends, it felt like an afterthought, it's because it was. Like, there's some tweets um, about an interview where the people were literally like, yeah, if you're wondering like why uh, Latias of all people, oh, of all people, of all Pokemon, is the one that Ash sees, uh, it's because it's just... Be it's just, it's just because we, we thought that's literally cool. what they said. That's literally yeah, what they said. It, we thought it'd be cool if there was like a legendary that followed him. And uh, since Latias can be invisible, we just kind of thought, yeah, why not Latias? That way he can be invisible and follow him around to like tie everything together. Yeah. And there's no and reason. Then, because, yeah. And then, oh, why, why why is it Misty and Brock that followed him? Uh, Because why not? It's a good throwback. You know, we need someone to, to be with him. And even though everyone could have like joined were, back. Yeah. There are people seem like they're kind of busy or whatever. Even though, like, Misty and Brock literally had to get back to their jobs, basically. And that was literally the whole point of, like, the episodes that they got back with them. They literally said they had to get back to jobs or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So everything was just an afterthought. They literally just said, oh, you know, it's just, like, deals we had that we didn't use in other episodes. So we decided to use them here. Yeah, it was dumb. Um, So I, I liked it in the sense that, you know, it was cool seeing Ash be a normal 10-year-old again. He was eating ice or whatever I saw him doing. Yeah, but he was always... That, that's such a dumb excuse because he always used to hang around and just do stuff and play around. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, I Especially because in every season, don't they, like, do that at the end? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it was just like, but I got it. It was... It, at least it was kind of chill. Um... You know, I thought it was kind of stupid the way Team Rocket got back, the way the Pidgeot oh, shows and, up. And, and the best way, it ends with Ash just going, I wonder which way I should go. And then he kind of he like... He throws a stick, and then he like... Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like a flip of a coin. And he just goes, I guess I go this way. I'm going to start a new adventure. And then Team Rocket's after him, and that's it. So basically, the, the cycle never ends. It, it's just, oh, same old, same old. But they, that's not what people wanted. The point is, if you're going to end Ash's story, then end his damn story. 
They'll just leave yeah. it on. Oh, the adventure continues, I guess. Like that's so that's- stupid. Like I'm telling you, it just was so disappointing. They, if they were gonna do this, they might as well have just ended it where he won the championship. He was yeah, happy. that's the thing. That's what they should have done. Yeah, and that should have been it. Not this eleven extra episodes where nothing happens. Like, what's the point of that? That is so. That's, stupid. Why, that's why it makes it kind of sad because um, when I was watching the ending, which is type wild. Like, the song's kind of sad already, and then the fact that it's supposed to be, like, the last episode and everything. What made it sad wasn't the fact that it's supposed to be, like, oh, boy, this is the end of Ash's journey. It's the fact that it's the end of Ash's journey, but we're never going to see what happens afterwards. That's the thing that makes it stupid, because we could have literally had an actual conclusion where you know Ash is, like, done with his journey for real. The thing is, no, it's not, because he has to go on a nerd journey... But we don't know what's going to happen anymore. We don't know what like new people he might run into, if any new people, because it could literally just be the same exact people from the other journeys. You know what I mean? So that's what yeah. makes it kind of like that's what kind of messes it up because it's like, you know, like thanks for the sad music and everything, and it makes me sad. But the reason why it's making me sad is because you don't end the series. You know what I mean? You're, yeah, it's just dumb. I, don't I just know. don't get what the point is, and they don't. They didn't have a point either. They're just yeah, we're just like, killing time, using ideas we didn't have, we hadn't used, and like why do it then? If you don't like care, then why why do it? I, I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, they could have just yeah. Yeah, I really did not like these eleven last episodes. I'm telling you, I feel like they should have just ended it where he won the championship. Then that would have been a nice ah okay, he won the championship. That's cool. Now we're gonna move on to a new protagonist. It's like he, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be goal. surprised. Yeah, you know? I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if none of these episodes end up being canon by like any of the d- directors or producers or anything. They're just like, yeah, because we just did whatever, it doesn't matter to like the actual plot. I would be like, yeah, of course it doesn't. Yeah. That's why that's yeah, why it feels is. rushed. Uh, that's um, just stupid. Anyways, um, you know, enough of like anime or video game stuff. Um, well, I mean, not video game stuff. The next thing is that I watched the eShop closed down live oh, i got yeah. to see it oh my god so basically guys if you guys are wondering like um i mean for you because you know you must have gotten the 3ds near like the end of like um i don't know like like i don't know how old are you <laughs> no but you know for you like the 3ds might not be like a childhood thing you know for me i kind of grew up around the whole eShop thing you know and then the fact that, like, because I never was able to afford games when I was younger, I would go on the eShop and look at the stuff and just kind of dream. So, you know, I would always be nice. visiting it and just kind of be like, oh, this game looks cool. And that's actually how I found out about Shantae. I found it out through the eShop when I was, like, a kid. Oh, really? And I was, mm-hmm. Like, I, I knew about it since I was, like, 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 I was, like, two years old. No, but, like... You know, like seven around there. I was kind of like, you know what? This game looks cool. It's a Game Boy Advance. I mean, Game Boy Color game. It looks pretty cool. It has like a colorful vibe and, you know, all that stuff. And I was like, this looks pretty cool, you know? And so it was cool seeing all these different games and everything. But what sucks is the fact that, you know, like recently for the past two years or three, they were like, yeah, we have to close it down. So um last year before they shut down the whole thing with the credit and debit card thing i bought myself earthbound oh, because nice. you know you know the 3ds and wii u they were the only ways of officially owning a copy of the game up yeah. until now you know until now because now we have it on switch um basically i bought it on 3ds i have the copy i 100 percented the almost 100 percent of the game on the 3ds um and so that's the only game I've officially bought with my own money on the three um, eShop. Yeah. And yeah, like I got sad because like, damn, like, you know, it's going to close. But I was like, you know what? I just can't wait to see it close because that's going to be kind of the end of the chapter where it's like, I mean, I'm already a teenager, so it's not childhood anymore. But neither is it going to be like, you know, that thing where I can officially be like, yeah, this like part of my life is already like dead, basically 100 percent, you know? And so I watched it like close down. And yeah, it's just crazy, guys. Cause if you like look at the eShop, you'll see that literally when you load it up, there's no other selection except Nintendo Selects. That's it. And then when you click on the Nintendo Selects, it gives you an option of games, but you can't even buy the games. It just gives you those games because those are the games that you know are like the most popular, supposedly. It just like shows them off. That's it. Mm-hmm. Cause Nintendo's kind of like saying, like, hey, go to your local store. And buy these quick because if not, we definitely are gonna stop producing these games too. Wow. 
So you know that it's like that's why you kind of like get that option. And then it's crazy because after that, since um for some reason my 3DS eShop wasn't updating and it gave me all the older stuff, I purposely downloaded, um, deleted the extra data thing so I can get the original music. And so when I loaded up the the thing with the original music, it was just very crazy and nostalgic because you're like, damn, like this is like the first theme you would hear on the eShop, you know? Right. And so um yeah you know it was pretty emotional <laughs> um and um yeah afterwards what was crazy is that because it closed right before no not after before it closed i downloaded pokemon bank because what i heard was that if you get lucky right after it closes you will be able to use pokemon bank for free without buying any passes whatsoever so i was like you know what yeah, there, That's I heard about that too. That way you can get your stuff over to uh, home or home or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this is definitely worth it, you know. And because I have a hack switch, I mean, not, well, yeah, I do. A hack 3DS, I was like, you know what? You know, out with the old and in with the new, I downloaded what's called an H shop. The H shop is basically just Nintendo's e shop, except it's the homebrew equivalent of it. And so because I couldn't download Pokemon Transporter, which works with, um, you know, black and white, gold and silver, all those games. Basically, I, I downloaded it from the H shop and I also downloaded um what's it called? What's the name of that game? Four Swords Anniversary Edition. I downloaded that and I downloaded some homebrew stuff and there was even movies on there. Oh, that's cool. So Battle of Gods and stuff, it was on there and everything. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So basically, now that the e shop is officially dead, you moved on to like, you know, the community base tax and homebrew and all that basically yeah basically yeah yeah it's a shame that they had to shut down i mean a lot of people are upset but at the same time i get it i i, I guess i get it because at the same time it's like well you can't expect them to like what just like maintain. keep it on forever yeah yeah i mean a perfect world yeah but like you know who else does that like not even like any companies and i think hold on to like their oldest oldest stuff do they yeah no that's the thing and what sucks is so from what it seems though, the only thing that makes it kind of suck suck though is that there are stuff that is just eShop exclusive though, which makes it suck. Because for example, that um game with the armadillo dude, if I remember correctly, now it's lost in time basically in a sense. Except oh, if you except if about. you pirate it. Except if you pirate yeah, it. Yeah, I was talking about it was like this armadillo like cowboy or something, right? Like the yeah, he show, he shows up in Smash Bros. Yeah. Yeah, I remember a lot of people had even said like it would be kind of cool. Um, I saw a video at one point where they're saying it'd be cool if you made it into Smash Bros because he's like a very unique character and stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially because the gameplay, the way it works from what I've seen, and I think there is a demo and I've seen it, it's that basically, think of it as Sonic, except he keeps rolling, but I don't think he has enemies, like in the sense of like like Sonic where you have to like roll into them and you kind of just keep casually do it. It's basically that you roll around a map, I think, it's like you're kind of racing in a sense, but the enemies are in front of you and you jam into them. Oh, that's or something like that. So it's like a, it, that's why when you play Smash and he you summon him, he kind of does like a weird homing attack um spin dash thing. Mm -hmm. It's because basically that's his whole gimmick where he just spins into things, and that's basically his gimmick. He just keeps going, basically. Nice. And so that's what that was cool, you know. And then I forgot what the other game's called, but I think it's like a building one where like you pull stuff and you climb. It's like with this little cute guy. Um, I think it's called Sneeko something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just make staking that for certain people, you know. Um, basically, like the, the that game, I th like that's what I'm saying. I think it's called Smeeko or S I forgot what it was called actually. But basically, people are saying that game's lost to time too. Like you cannot find it at all anymore too. I mean, there's, those, just there, 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 there's people who are, if the game existed, they download oh, yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They, they it, up, the the, the CIA files and stuff most likely exist. It's just that if you're like one of those people that no, I don't want to like hack because oh, I'm like a pure, yeah, there's, there's a no, purist. There's no, yeah. like, there's no official place to get it. That you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no official place to get it. This and the yeah, armadillo, I, I, the armadillo heard, game, um, you can't heard, get it. I heard that happened with the Nintendo um, rewards or whatever at some point too. But those mm -hmm. specific stuff you could get. Um, I know one of the things that some people were talking about is um, there was a punch out exclusive one with Doc Lewis where you're we're training with him. Oh, yeah, that was for the Wii. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and so it was an exclusive thing where it's like, man, if it was for people backing it up, I guess it's somewhere out there. Because if not, it's the same thing. Like, how would you access that? Like, it's gone to time. 
Mm -hmm, it's gone because like and that's the thing thankfully it seems that you know we know that people backed it up i've seen people back it up and stuff but if you're someone that's like no man i just can't like hack my consoles because you know my reasons it's like then you're never going to be able to play the game then because you know yeah that's why a lot of people you know they're like oh no you know emulation or oh no i only want to play stuff officially or like whatever i think the point is but that's why it's so important that people are looking into the game preservation and stuff because if not some stuff would just be lost it's like so lame because mm-hmm. like all these companies the don't care like they'll um either just like don't back their stuff up and it'll be just be lost and never be released etc and it sucks so it's nice that people do do this even if you kind of look down mm-hmm. upon it like it's important because if not some stuff would just be gone which is really lame yeah man and that's what i'm saying that i'm happy with the eight shop because it's not even just like the 3ds games and the virtual console for what it seems they even have like the ds eyewear games and from what I remember on the 3DS eShop for, and I mean forever since I was a kid when I used to look at the thing, I don't think I used to have that many DSiWare games on the 3DS shop either. The only games I remember being on there was like the Mighty um, Mighty Switch Force and Shantae, and that was basically it. Yeah, Those were the only, that. and Four Swords anniversary edition four swords anniversary edition i remember they removed it eventually yeah i remember for a limited like a bunch of time it was only those three games that they were on the 3ds eShop like for long times yeah and so that's the thing that it's pretty cool to hear you see that it's like a full-on list of those games because you know that you just have an access to like two generations of games basically yeah, that kind of reminds me once again, trying back to like, the whole Wii thing, like the whole uh, Nintendo Rewards thing or whatever it was called. That mm-hmm. reminds me of the same thing with like the WiiWare. WiiWare, even though a lot of them weren't like, you know, you could say, oh, what's the point of WiiWare? They weren't like official games. They were like little small Indie experiences games. or whatever. But it's still kind of cool that like, hey, they still existed. They were still somewhere probably worth playing. It's good mm-hmm. that people s- hopefully saved as many as possible because again, where would you get the little WiiWare games? They were only on the Wii. They were like a you know, digital thing. It's not like you can just go to a store and buy them anywhere. So yeah, you you can't. Yeah, and so um, yeah, you know that was pretty cool. That was basically um, that's basically what I did. You know, and I'm saying it was pretty crazy because like I remember I downloaded a bunch of stuff before it closed to mostly updates and stuff because you know for some reason recently um, you know because it's gone. I saw that Nintendo updated X and Y, for example, and I, you know, I have Pokemon Y, so I updated the game. What's weird is that if you look it up, though, you you don't see any records of them updating the games, though. But you know why, though? It's probably because it's just a quick mini update because it's the same version that from the um, 2015, the last update. I think it's just a mini update. That's why. Oh, that's weird. To hmm. fix some stuff, maybe, or something. That's strange, Yeah. Yeah. So it's weird because, yeah, I updated, like, one of my, um like, two Mario games and the Pokemon one. And then from there, you know, I was just kind of like, well, like, it's gone now. Like, I can't really do anything with it. So I just let it die, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's basically been my week. It was pretty, you know. It was pretty it was, emotional. <laughs> it was pretty emotional. It, it was pretty emotional, you know. You start hearing me cry. Right. Jeez. And so bring it out. I start. I turn on the camera. My eyes are like drenched in like tears. <laughs> They're all irritated. Oh, <laughs> oh god, I'm like crazy. No, but yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Oh, that reminds me. There's something we're gonna talk about later that's also been kind of like dead. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> reminded me. We'll talk about that in a moment. But uh... yeah, um, that's right, actually that was the that was the hint I was gonna give too. That yeah, so um, you know, look out for that by like later, and that was pretty much my week. You know, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. I was going to say, yeah, uh, mine, you know, we're going to get to the thing we're talking about in a moment because my week was not that. Um, there's not that much to talk about. All I really wanted to mention is that um, it was a lot of preparing for weeks coming up, if anything. Uh, by that, I mean that, for instance, the latest anime season is basically over and the new one's going to start very soon. So I was trying to mostly just catch up on anime. That way, next week, I'm going to try to do like a big. Um, we may even dedicate the whole episode to it. It'll just be like an anime season roundup. Yeah. So we might we might do that. Um, I mean, mostly me talking. You can jump in here and there. Well, we'll see how it goes. But I'm thinking I might just do that next week. It might just be the anime season roundup. Talk about all the anime from winter 2023 that I watched. Because there was a few. 
You know, and then there's some I maybe picked up since the last time I talked. So there's a few things to talk about. Yeah. Uh, so I was catching up on that. There's still, you know, I'm still going to try to catch up for in time for next week. Then I finally got around to uh, doing a video for a manga review. If anyone remembers, I've done a, like two or three of those on my channel. So I finally got around to doing another one of those. That should be up by the time this video goes up, if everything goes well. Nice. And I already started writing like another one. So I got done with one and I started writing another one. So that's pretty cool. You know, go back to nice. that. Nice. So that's, you know, a lot of stuff I was doing, just a lot of kind of can say preparing for like, you know, the future. Uh, and then another thing I did that was really random is that not the main computer that I use for all like my editing and you know all my main stuff. It's another computer that I kind of put to the side that it still works. It's the computer I was actually using before this one, it still works. But I don't yeah. really have a good use for it. It's just kind of connected to a printer in case I need to print stuff. So I don't know why I had the idea. I'm like, oh, I should like get like a game on there and just like run it. And like, I can like like look over at it and see how like the game's doing. So I got the Sims 3 and I just put it on that computer. And so whenever I like look over the computer, it's just, like running Sims like the whole time. And I can see like, ah, what are they up to? <laughs> nice. So that's kind of that's been kind of fun. So um yeah, if I get bored of that, maybe I'll like throw Animal Crossing on there and just leave Animal Crossing, you know, running twenty four seven and see all the stuff that ha- that happens in it. I don't know, <laughs> but Sims is a lot more interactive. That's why you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just have the Sims on there. You can see the the characters just walking around doing stuff and stuff. It's kind of cool. Nice. Um. So yeah. So I was doing a bit of that, getting into the Sims, and you know, that's pretty cool. I feel like the Sims three better than four. There's just something about three. It feels like there's oh, more. Oh yeah. yeah. I definitely. Uh, yeah. People, uh, you've probably heard the complaint too. Like it, three just feels like it had more options somehow. I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, because EA has always been pretty bad with like their games and expansion passes, and you know that's yeah, maybe, maybe asking you to pay for like every two seconds. Yeah, and even even the third one was bad with that. But I feel like maybe it was like just in time where like you still got like a bit more than with four, where it felt like it was even more chopped up. Maybe that's why. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but it definitely feels like you can do a little bit more in three that you couldn't four. Oh, know. yeah. I don't know how to explain it. If it was like three, there's more life decisions and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then the well, AI. four, there's more like customization. But a lot of you have to like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's it's, it's weird. Yeah, I was going to say the AI in the fourth one was so dumb. Like, I remember like compare like in the, the, the first three, because I've seen like the comparison. I feel like in the fourth one, everyone, just, like your AI for your characters are just like super stupid. Because like, I remember like, I had a character that like, he was living with another character and like, instead of sitting at the table in the dining room eating his food he would go into the like the other person's room where he had his own dining table and he would eat in that room and then like he just refused to do stuff sometimes too <laughs> what the heck and then like there was like i think there was like even a moment where like my character sat at like the the kitchen table like the one where you cook i think he ate there or something but that was like meant for something else and I don't know, I was like super stupid. And I was like, there's no way that the AI is this bad. And yeah, the characters. Yeah, exactly. just... I get what you mean. Like, if you have a dining table, usually they go in at least at the dining table. Unless let's say there's not a dining table, then they'll go to the next thing. Like, oh, I'll go eat on like this, the, the couch then, or I'll go I get what upstairs you mean. So, and eat my room. Yeah. Or let's say that if you don't have like a dishwasher or a sink in the kitchen, you'll see that the character will grab the plate, walk into like the bathroom, and like wash it in that sink. Yeah. So something like that, but like stupid is what you're saying. He would just like go to like a random place to eat. Yeah, and then you would like tell him like, "Hey, go to this place because this is where you're supposed to eat." And you would see like a weird like mad face or like an X on top, and it was like saying like, "I can't, like, I don't want to do that." Wow, that's big. <laughs> it was so stupid. I'm like, "There's no way my character is that like that stupid, man." That's crazy. But that's what I'm saying. People, have, I've heard complain a lot. And even me, that I've played both of them. I feel like 3 just has more options. I don't know how to explain it. I would have to like really look no, at I, a review. I, I, I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, I need to look at a review that says exactly what, like, puts into words what I'm thinking. Like, what is the difference? You know what I mean? Oh, my God, yeah. But anyway, that's it for my week. My week is short. Like I said, a lot of it's just kind of preparing for the future. Um, I'm just gonna throw it out there. The Mario movie comes out this week. I'm excited to go oh, see that. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I've been trying yeah. to keep my schedule open so I can go see it. You know, this opening week that will be awesome. Yeah. 
Ah, good stuff, good stuff. Um, cool, cool. Then I guess that's it for our weeks. As you can see, good stuff. Um, you know, I'm excited to talk about the news. I'm looking at the news. So we have three different news stories. All of them have to do with gaming in some way. Uh, one of them I actually talked about already on the channel, but I, I don't mind talking over it with you because I'm excited for it. And one of them is the kind we said something that died, which is kind of sad. And the last one is just something kind of cool. So excited for that as well. Yeah. So that's just a little hint of things to come. So diving into the first news story, as the article title says, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom gameplay trailer, every new detail revealed. So yes, earlier this week, they had a gameplay trailer, if you can call it that, or a gameplay direct, whatever you call it, of Tears of the Kingdom. Where oh, they yeah, said, that, hey, yeah. we're going to have about 10 minutes of gameplay. Come, come check it out. And it was really cool because it kind of came out of nowhere. It was really random. I was excited. I watched it. I know you said you watched it. And yeah. man, uh, I already said it on the channel. Everybody can go listen to it. So I'm not going to try to talk about it too, too much. But man, after watching this gameplay trailer, or whatever you want to call it, I'm excited because they made the game look really, really cool. Yeah, the gameplay and everything makes it look so interesting compared to um, what we were shown before. Because obviously before, I thought it looked pretty cool anyways, you know, because... Honestly, I just like Zelda related stuff anyways, you know, but, um, you know, the gameplay is what matters because, you know, let's be honest, some Zelda games, some people always say like one game is better than the other when it comes to plot, but then other people are like, no, nah, yeah, that game's gameplay was pretty good compared to the other one. So, you know, it's always like one game has the better gameplay from the other, but the other game has a better plot, stuff like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I feel that, you know. I'm hoping that, yeah, the plot is as equally good as this gameplay. Because, yeah, this gameplay looked was pretty lit. Yeah, like, I way, loved the way, it the way, really the, well. The way I kind of explained on my channel when I was looking at it, and then we'll get into the actual details in a moment. The way I said it is that I hope, and we've talked about it, I hope the story and like the lore lives up to what people want it to be because it feels like their teasing is going to be something big there's gonna be like a big shake up it's a big event that's what they even said you know go play skyward sword first you know because that's like very important in the timeline blah 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 and so i'm hoping that the game the game story is good i'm hoping that it lives up to i'm expectations. hoping so too yeah however what i would say is that man the gameplay looks so good that even if the story like totally failed which once again i hope it doesn't but even if the story failed, the gameplay looks so unique and so innovative that that feels like that alone could make this game good. Mm -hmm. Because people could really just be like, no, nah, man, the gameplay was lit. Like, you like, know, like the story was ass, but I had so much fun that even like just ignoring the story, just running around, just running yeah. around hitting people with rocks was pretty lit, you know? Yeah, I mean, basically, <laughs> I, saying, I, I hope that the game, the, the story and lore lives up to it, but this mm -hmm. gameplay is so good, it feels like they could totally fail on that aspect and the game would still be fun. You know? mm -hmm. What I like too is that it's fitting that aspect that a lot of Zelda games have in the past where sometimes um because let's be honest the game doesn't look that different either from its predecessor it doesn't really look that different in the world if anything the only extra stuff i can tell is that you know his does link's designs are slightly different the fact that there's the worlds in the top like the islands or whatever but when you look at like the the, the shell the cell shading and the fact that there's like the little camp where the horses are at and everything you can tell this is the exact same hyrule from the last game well, to be fair, he didn't show much. The guy in the trailer, he even said the overworld will be very different. Oh, well, yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, you can tell it, it, it's more well, expanded. It's, a, it's more expanded, basically. Well, no, and not only that, I mean, obviously, they're not going to make a whole new map. I'm sure it's going to be the same map, and it's just going to be with stuff changed or added on and stuff, because mm -hmm. that's the thing, though. If, it, if it's a sequel, they're not going to just, like give us a totally different location the point is it's going to be a map yeah. recognize from the first game but the point's going to be to be like ah i remember this area there used to be a lake here and like now it's dry or i yeah. remember this area there used to be i don't know like uh i could farm here for uh apples and now or it's covered lot, in enemies or something or, you know? or a lot of people used to live here but now it's like destroyed yeah, yeah, like, yeah. um i was thinking like banjo tui banjo tui has that where um the first few worlds there um from the first game 
but then from there on it's all unique but when you visit like the old locations everything's like destroyed and depressing or something like that yeah so it would be yeah. like that um so i think that's pretty cool that they're expanding on the world you can tell the camps from the other game are here still you know which is pretty cool mm-hmm. and um the gameplay was really cool where um yeah that's what i'm trying to get into so i'm trying to yeah i know that's why i can tell yeah um, yeah so i want to actually tell people some of the differences um so yeah so in the well, that's what i want to say in the article that i'm linking it's gonna go over everything that even stuff that necessarily they didn't really talk about but people notice just from like details of looking at like the hud and you can't look at the ui look at the environment etc i'm not gonna go over them but i'm just gonna say you know if you follow the article it explains a lot of stuff i hadn't even noticed that like apparently people noticed just by looking you know at every little detail of like the map and the ui and stuff uh however the big ones i want to go over is that yes number one the map is supposed to be different the guy who was playing it he's the producer of zelda he did not go over you know what was different but he promised that yes if you look at the map and you explore you will notice that a lot of things have been shaken up so that sounds interesting to me uh another thing is that a big one for instance is that if you look up you will see that there's a lot of stuff in the sky there's a lot of like sky land masses and islands and blah 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 that's really cool because it is reminiscent of skyward sword but the way it looks here it looks like it is way better implemented mm-hmm. like you can literally look up and you'll see them right there basically yeah like, literally... skyward sword it was just like okay there's like the land portion of the game and there's the sky portion of the game and, then and the, the sky, sky portion of the game was just kind of an afterthought where it's like oh there's the central little like hub city town whatever and Dialogue, there's other little yeah. things that you can like fly to and land but they weren't really there's not really much going on here it looks like there's like a lot going on in the sky there's a lot of verticality where you can like go from like the sky to the ground and fly around and you know it's it's crazy like if you think about it, like a um like a cube before it used to be like you were just on the bottom level of the cube mm-hmm, here, exactly yeah and, and if you think about like i said like skyward sword you were just like, kind of like on the mm-hmm. upper half of the cube that was it here it's like the whole cube from top to bottom every corner of it you can explore either mm-hmm. at the top or the bottom or the middle or whatever like it, it's crazy that yeah there's a lot they added to it and then what i like is that when you look up you see that there's like the islands right what I think is cool is that the way they always describe, I mean, let's be honest, we also know that there's the whole thing with um, Hylia and all that stuff. But what I think is interesting is that this actually looks like the islands are a part of the literal sky instead of like a heavens type of aspect. Because basically when you look at Skyward Sword and you look up at the sky, it looks like there's just clouds and that's just the sky, you know. And so, you know, when you look at how deep, far skyloft is from hyrule it is kind of like far basically and here it's cool because it looks like it's all just one giant land and so when you look up skyloft really does live up to that name of being in the sky instead of like the heavens type of aspect because the way they implement it in skyward sword is it looks like it's more in a heavens area basically like it's like farther up yeah you know? it's just like a big disconnect between what's in the sky and what's on the ground yeah mm-hmm. so i think that's pretty interesting because here if it tells you that there is more than just oh yeah here's this kingdom it's like no 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 there's no such thing as just this kingdom there's more beyond the kingdom you know yeah, we don't even know what the sky stuff is yet. We don't know if it's mm-hmm. the sky loft. We don't know if it's stuff from the ground that is in the sky, like it got sent up there. We don't really or know past, that. Or past Hyrule Land or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, then leading into that, um, for instance, one of the things that they showed, one of the new powers, and I'll talk about all the powers in a row from here, um, is that they showed that one of the ways to get up there, they're like, oh, you know, there's a lot of stuff up there. How do you get up there? And it showed like a, something falling. It looked kind of like a meteor. And the guy's like, oh, let's go check that out. And it shows that he like runs, climbs the mountain, goes to check it out. And it's this weird like debris. Mm-hmm. And he's in a power called Recall, which is like a rewind ability. It's he- rewind time he climbs on the little debris thing rewinds time and it climbs all the way back up to where it started into the sky and he uses that to then just jump off uses paraglider to go like to one of the sky islands mm-hmm. 
So that's pretty cool. So there's going to be a move called recall where you can literally, you know, target something. Like you and, recall, yeah. Yeah, and, and rewind time and it goes back to where it was. So that's going to be interesting. I wonder if you can even use it on like bosses and stuff. That would be really cool. Oh, well, I guarantee this move because let's be honest, when these games come out, they don't get an update until like a few minutes after the game comes out, basically. I guarantee you, people are going to probably find some sort of weird way to exploit the, the new ability. I guarantee you. Oh, for sure. Yeah, there's going to uh, be ways to break the game probably. There another ability that they showed is called Fuse. This is a really interesting one where basically Link can get any two items or weapons or I don't even know if it's two. Um, who knows how many things can stick together, but it shows that basically what I'm trying to say is you can stick items together. Like they showed that he got a stick and he stuck it to a rock and basically you have a big old hammer mm-hmm. or he stuck a stick to like a pitchfork and he had like a long spear looking thing almost like a pitchfork kind of yeah. yeah it was like a big old like long like pitchfork spear thing and all like you uh put weapons together but you can put them with items uh for instance show that he stuck a uh korok leaf on an arrow and then he stuck a piece of ice to that and it became an ice arrow mm-hmm. and then he stuck a uh, this is the one that i thought was really really impressive he stuck a monster eye to an arrow and just by pointing it, like shooting it in the general direction of a bird, it homes auto, in. A, a auto attack, a auto, um, aim bots, basically. Yeah, it yeah. Which is insane. Like, I don't know how it's going to work because, yeah, like, he doesn't even like aim it perfectly. It's just like, oh, it's in the general direction. And it like, auto targets it. It is crazy. Mm-hmm. And I'm I, wondering I, if he'll be able to use that to like auto target like enemy like weak points and stuff. Like, that would be really cool. Yeah, because that sounds pretty cool because if we know, especially for bosses too, you know how there's always those weird bosses in the Zelda games where it's like, oh my God, they always have to have like a giant eye somewhere. Yeah, that's they what have saying. to have like, I, I like wonder 15 if just, million ones. Yeah, I wonder like, if you can just use that to just like target the weak spot exactly yeah and it just automatically attacks those spots because that kind of reminds me too of the boomerang because the thing about how in the boomerang obviously with the boomerang you do have to lock on oh the little different spots yeah yeah, yeah. Tar- yeah but here it doesn't seem like you have to do that it just automatically does that it kind of reminds me of the boomerang except it automatically does the job for you that's yeah. what you're mm-hmm so they just showed so many combinations. I mean, they just, they just showed a few combinations that look really cool. I think it's going to be one of those things where, like, man, you can probably like, experiment a lot with what kind of weapons and items and stuff you make using different, you know, powers and stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Uh, then our power they showed was called Ascend. This is the one that they had kind of showed the trailer before, where apparently if you are like in a building and you use Ascend, Link will swim up through the building past the ceiling and he'll like climb to the top of the ceiling mm-hmm. so that's it really super weird cool. so it looks like it's just like a way to like kind of like almost like teleport through i mean phase through like walls but this time it's just ceilings though which is weird now i'm telling you dude those two moves the i mean fuse i think fuse is going to be very you know broken too but recall and ascend look like they can be like very get game breaking especially yeah. um ascend as well because if it's something where it's like you're upside down then you can like go on the f- the front ground basically like you can flip onto the top like there's people that are probably gonna be in dungeons or if there is dungeons because you know we don't know that obviously yeah, yeah. like literally if you're in a dungeon you just like be like yeah so i want to get to like the boss room how am i gonna do it Oh, I know. They use a send. They just break yeah, into just, the like, room. Yeah, crazy stuff. Yeah, I can see yeah, that. I can see that. I can see that. And then it's like, yeah, we're like want to like bo- bomb hover, but we don't know how to bomb hover. So we're just gonna like add a bunch of stuff by fusing, and then afterwards we're just gonna break into. Like I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, man. There's a lot. Oh, and then I was almost missing one. Duh. And the last one is called Ultra Hand. That this one almost looks like you have the power of like some sort of like a magic glue. Because it showed that, for instance, they're like, ah, we need to get across a river, but we don't have a boat. How should we do it? So they literally got a bunch of logs, stuck them all together. Some nearby fans stuck those to the logs, climbed on a little boat they made, used the sword to, like, you know, slash at the fans and turn them on. And then they basically had a little motorboat to sail across the river. Yeah, they basically made a raft, yeah. Yeah, they were saying that. um, That's what they had shown in the last trailer where it showed that he was, like, on a weird car looking thing and he doesn't know where was like weird like hot air balloon that is stuff that you can make yourself using this power because it lets you i don't know how many things that let you stick together but it lets you just stick a bunch of items together and 
you can use them as vehicles, you know, if you have the right parts and stuff. So let's see, make a rocket. I wouldn't even be surprised. Right. You're just making your own freaking huge rocket. Or I was choking with uh terrific because I talked to him the day this came out. I'm like, watch you just like make your own like huge sky fortress, just defeat the final boss by dropping like a huge high roll castle sized sky fortress on the boss's head and just killing him. Oh them. yeah, that would be great. You just like drag it down and <laughs> Just spot just drop on his head and freaking kill him like crazy. <laughs> yeah, but uh other things I'm just gonna mention that they're kind of on the list here. You guys look it up for yourself. So not only the abilities, not only the fact that yes, they're really expanding the world with a bunch of changes, such as verticality, but apparently, according to people they saw here, it looks like there's like new icons on the map. It looks mm-hmm. like oh, I mean we, we saw skydiving is back so if you ever get skydiving like in a skyward sword you're able to do that and just kind of like go wherever which is really cool uh there's new enemies there's still dragons flying around the sky i don't know if you can track those down for anything um it says apparently here koroks are back Nice. I never saw that, but I guess somebody noticed in the details. Me neither, yeah. Something I never about saw map it. control, I mean new controls, map coordinates, campfire smoke. Uh, all sorts of details people just notice by looking at the map and stuff. You know, if you guys want to read it for yourself, go ahead. But yeah, I just all I want to say, you know, before we move on is that the game looks really cool. I'm really excited. It looks really interesting. Uh Link's new look is very unique. It looks like they're definitely going with some thing you know, interesting story wise and i just want to say that i hope the game moves up to the hype it comes out in a month and i'm excited <laughs> yeah i'm really excited for that yeah 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 oh and one last thing that yeah there's gonna be like a switch exclusive uh tears of the kingdom themed switch of the oled version it looks really cool i'm tempted to buy it i don't know <laughs> yeah i'm tempted too bro it looks pretty cool yeah yeah Alrighty, moving on to the second news story. This is the one I had mentioned that it's about something that died. As the title of the article states, E3 has been canceled. Yeah, it, it was kind of, it was kind of, you know. Yeah, because I mean, I think not too long ago, a couple weeks back or whatever, we did the story about how uh, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft each said they weren't going to be there. And then like, mm-hmm. not too long after, I think Ubisoft said they weren't going to be there. And I think, well, damn, dude, if at this point you don't have the big three and you don't have Ubisoft, which is like another really big one, you know, like what's really the point? And yeah, not that long after they said, yeah, even though they had said it was back, it's not coming back. It, it's 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 canceled. Um, the reason they give here, like the official reason, it says the show did not garner the sustained interest necessary. Well, yeah, because if like none of those people are going to show up and there's not going to be any other like candidates like at this point there is no it's 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 messed up to say it but there really is no need for e3 anymore if that's the case you know because like if there's no one that's going to show up no not even small businesses are going to show up just to be like yeah we're going to try to be like the next big thing here we are blah blah blah. like then there's not really a point in keeping e3 because just no one in general is going to show up you know like no yeah, companies. Yeah. I get it. I get it because a lot of people they rather just make like, their own like little conferences or their own little mini directs or whatever. But I, I had said it before. We had kind of talked about this before, but I just think it's disappointing because I get it. it is, it's yeah. one of those things that is might not. It's probably not going to come back. Let's be honest. That there's like first thing they, they shut it down because the pandemic. Now that the pandemic's over. They're still shutting it down. I don't really see it coming back unless they like really really change things. I think mm-hmm. it might be done for good. And if that's so, then, you know, it sucks, but it is what it is. But I'll still be very frank that I'm still disappointed because, as I said before, it was just really fun that everybody would Seeing get the together. Stuff, yeah. And it was a big buffet of, you know, streamers that you liked. Maybe you could watch them watch it. Uh, it was fun seeing all these little news stories come out, you know, over the same weekend. Yeah, uh, It was something that maybe if you had the money, it was one of those things worth saving for. Because, oh, dude, I'm going to go to E3 and I'm gonna go check out all like the demos and like the events and stuff. That would be something I kind of look forward to, and that's like one last thing to go to. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially because a lot of the so, like um, celebrities, like a lot of like the internet people, like celebrities, you would see a lot of them go, and they'd be like, "Yeah, I'm here at E3, and I got to play so so game, but it's just like a prototype or it's like a demo." 
Yeah, that's the thing too. Like I, as a fan, if some of those people were showing up, and that was an excuse to like, oh man, maybe I'll get to see some of these game directors or YouTubers or you know, and, game and, journalists and, and, or whatever. And maybe they're involved with whatever and stuff. Because I know yeah, for a fact, yeah, exactly. Off, and that's all gone now, you know. Mm-hmm. Because, because. Yeah, because I, I mean, I get it. We get demos very frequently now where it's like, oh, yeah, here's a demo for Resident Evil 4. Here's this and that. But a lot of those demos aren't even demos. Those are like a small part from like the final game and they just release it to you. But when you look, when I mean like demo, I mean like this is not even like 100% yet or 90%. This is like 10% done of a, a game. So when you get to play the next demo, it's not it's going to be completely different, you know? Cuz like um that's the thing when you look at all these older demos at like E3 or like um Nintendo used to have Space World or whatever it's called, you would look at the games and they would be very different from like the final mm-hmm. game. So yeah, I honestly agree that it is disappointing. It's just it sucks because yeah, now everyone's so used to the whole, you know, everyone's so used to direct style stuff that yeah, no one's gonna show up anymore, you know. And it would be fine if that's say okay, you know, E three is canceled, but all the companies agree in honor of like E three time, we're all gonna like still release some sort of a news at that time. Oh yeah, but they don't. Yeah, yeah. And no, if they feel like that, you know, who knows when we'll hear from them again. So that's another part that sucks. Like at least if they kind of kept the tradition, like okay, you know, E three's not around, but we're gonna like at least, June or July we do the stuff. We'll, yeah. We promise to at least show something off, you know, in honor of it. But nah, who knows when we'll get news now? What news we'll get? So another thing that's just disappointing in my in my opinion, you know. Yeah. yeah it is what it is, though. All right, finally, the last new story, at least it's more of a positive one. So it was kind of like a, uh, you know, went from <laughs> went from positive to, like, bad, but then back to, like, positive. As the title of the article states, GameCube and Wii emulator Dolphin coming to Steam this year. Yeah. Yeah, and if you read the story, it says it should be coming in quarter. Oh, that's the best part. It's going to be in Steam Early Access for free quarter to 2023. So that should be really soon, because right now I would say the first quarter is just about done. You know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. you know, about April, that's like what, like the fourth month, that would be like the first quarter. So it should mm-hmm. come like what, like May, like May, June, like I guess summertime, basically. They said it's around June or somewhere around there. Yeah, it's that's really exciting. Um, not that, not, like, not that like Dolphin doesn't already exist. I mean, you can already get it on your PC, you can get it on your phone, you know. But the fact that it's coming to Steam is cool because that just means that it's more mainstream. It's going to be more moderated, more, you know, under control of, you know, it's it's going to be, I don't know how to explain it, but you know what I mean? It's going to be like more under control because it's on an actual storefront mm-hmm. and people are going to be like actually like, you know, taking care of it, I guess you can say. All the updates will be there. All the different features will be there. One of the things that one of the people asked, I saw on some forum, they're like, or somewhere where the news was, Oh, it was the comments. Duh. It was the comments of the article. Uh, someone said, uh, will there be cloud saves? And they said, yes. So, like, that's really cool. Because mm-hmm, if you mess up the, um, if you can't get a, a save, obviously, yeah, it's uploaded to the cloud. So you have it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah you're going to pick on a different, you know, device or whatever. So that's really cool. So not really much to say. Like I said, I mean, it's not like it's a new emulator or anything. Like, Dolphin's been around forever. And you can get on, like, just about everything. But I just think it's kind of cool it's coming to Steam because that just makes it more mainstream. Like I said, it's going to have more moderation, or you want to call it, mm-hmm. more people are going to take care of it because, you know, it's on a big platform and there will be supposedly, you know, a lot of like different like, um, tweaks to it and updates and options and stuff. And I just think that's really cool. Because mm-hmm, for uh, me, I'm excited because um, Steam you know for especially for like the kids i know around me steam or even epic game store it's like this huge like it's basically like the gods for like the kids i know it's like they're like the gods of like the freaking um how do you call it like gaming world they treat it like you know it's like this great thing and it is you know but this allows them to finally have access basically to older games in a sense because i know that a lot of these kids are like no i can never download like emulators off of websites because i i just don't like downloading programs i just love getting them from like steam and stuff and here it's cool because if i know they can download it from an official source that they trust then they can finally be able to play the games officially 
and yeah, from their yeah, PC I know what, I, yeah, because I know what you mean. It's one of those things where it's so easy to like download your own apps and you know programs and stuff, but a lot of people don't do it. Like that's they the do. reason that iPhones and you know other Apple products are so popular. Because a lot of people don't like, like, I love Android and PCs and I stuff. Do, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it lets me have my own options. Like, I love being able to download stuff from whatever source I want, configuring it so I can, like, use it. I love, you know, doing whatever I need to do, taking stuff apart, whatever. But some people are, no, they're really simple. Like you said, it's just like, no, I have this device. I like clicking the store, downloading whatever it tells me that I can download, and that's it. Some people mm-hmm. don't look any farther into it. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of what you're saying here that, yeah, for people who don't really like dig into how do I like find my own stuff and then make it work, it's like, oh, cool. Steam has this thing that lets me play, you know, old games, an emulator. I'm going to use mm-hmm. it. And then with the fact that people have, you know, been buying the Steam Deck and they're like, I want to play. And oh, 64- yeah, that's thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. N64, GameCube, PS2, Kingdom Hearts, all that stuff, especially Kingdom Hearts because of the refined uh, modification. People are like, dude, like, how am I going to be able to play all these, like, games that aren't on Steam? And so they're always having to dig through the computer and the Steam Deck and this and that. Here, they don't have to dig through anything anymore. They can just download the official version of Dolphin off the Steam Deck and they can just play the games, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so that's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, so not really much to say, like I said, you know, Dolphin's existed for a while, but just the fact that it's getting more mainstream, more out there is cool. The one last thing I did want to say, though, is that, yeah, I wonder how this is going to work with Nintendo, because Nintendo's so iffy about stuff. I'm surprised this is going through, and they haven't tried to, like, shut it down or made a bit, make a big deal about it. It's kind of weird. I wonder how this is going to work, a world where, like, unless, Dolphin unless, just exists on here. You know, it's weird. Yeah, unless they're not going to take it down, because apparently, um, you know how basically there's that weird legal thing where emulators aren't illegal, but ROM... No, not ROMs. Pirating files from video games, AK ROMs, ISOs, whatever. Yeah, like ROM that's distribution. Illegal. ROM distribution is illegal, but not emulators. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's why they can't do it, and so that's what's going to piss them off that they can't do that, and so that's why it's going through because it's like, oh crap, we can't for some reason, you know, take these guys down because it's an emulator. But we sure as hell hope some kid downloads like a ROM and we can just track him down and like you know bust him. Like it, maybe it's something like that, you know. Yeah, who knows? But mm-hmm. like I said, I only know is that for now it's pretty cool. It's great that it is working out. Makes me happy and same, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll try some try it out at some point. That'd be kind of fun. I'm I'm already, definitely get, I'm I already definitely... I already have stuff like on my computer, but it'd be kind of interesting to see like, ah, what options do they have? You know, how, how what's the setup that they have? Yo, I'm definitely gonna be trying to freaking get um definitely get that on my you know pc i'm gonna definitely try to get it especially when it's the early access i'm mm-hmm. definitely getting it yeah oh 72 i did not even thought about since there's gonna be the official that's the thing that's the, that's the last thing i guess and then we'll move on um not everybody's pc can run everything right yeah but with this being officially on steam i wonder if that will help somehow maybe with some of the, the weaker computers because they like, don't have the options you know, there to like maybe help run oh, yeah, stuff config, or whatever. Config stuff properly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, there's a game I've been wanting to play with Terrific for the longest time. It's a GameCube game. I wonder if maybe the fact that this is coming out on Steam, if he can download Steam on his like laptop or something, I wonder if that'll maybe help us play that game. I guess we'll have to see. Mm-hmm. Cause I know for a fact that Steam has like a weird, um, like the way it runs is kind of like equivalent of like a backwards compatibility sort of weird thing mm-hmm. where it does is it downgrades the the crap out of your computer and it'll be like yeah so like do you want to play like um what's the name of that one game where um the dude carries the fetus around um dead stranding yeah, it's like, yeah do you want to play dead stranding on your laptop that barely runs like 240p well we're gonna downgrade the hell out of the game for you it's oh, like geez. that it's like that. Like, literally, I guarantee you, yeah, the Steam does that, where I think you could play games like that on a weaker platformer platform. It just almost blows up or something like that, if I remember correctly. That's what I'm saying. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to wait and see, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. All yeah. right, but that's it for that, though. That's it. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the news. That's it for our weeks. I'm excited to get to this last thing. That's some kind of trying to hurry it up, because at the same time, I don't want the podcast to go on for too long um yes but going on to our last section 
we are going to talk about the topic of the week. And this topic of the week is one that I will actually get into my history within a moment. But it is an anime. And it is one that I watched a while ago. And I convinced Legend John that he should watch it. Jesus that Christ. way we could yeah. talk about it. <laughs> oh, my God. And no. yes, our topic of the week for this week is an anime called Sankarea Undying Love. Yeah. Now, I'm going to talk about the synopsis first. Then from there, we can kind of talk about our thoughts and, you know, that sort of thing. But just to read the synopsis, it says, Chihiro Furia is a male high school student with a keen interest in zombies, collecting zombie-related video games, film, and manga, and even to the point of desiring to kiss a zombie girl. Following the death of his pet cat, Babu, he attempts to revive it using an old manuscript, which describes the process of creating a potion for resurrection. At this time, he encounters a girl named Rea Sanka, who has run away from home. In an attempt to commit suicide, she drinks a sample of the resurrection potion, which is created from the poisonous Hondragia macrophilia flower, although this fails to kill her. Following in an argument with her father, she falls from a cliff by accident and dies. However, as a result of the potion, she becomes a zombie who eats hydrogena leaves to survive. The story follows the life of Chihiro and his new zombie girlfriend. Yeah. All right, so just, I guess, like, in a sentence or two, since you saw it, I told you to watch it, so we can talk about it this week. Summarize, which, what are your thoughts on it? Just in a sentence or two. Yeah, it, it's so, it's, 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 it, 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 it's weird, I'll admit. I, I liked it, the plot got interesting. It's just, like, overall, though, it's so weird, though. It's just super weird. Yeah, it's weird because our main character is, like, super into, like, zombies, right? <laughs> exactly. That's what makes it, like, so, it's like, like, it's, like, ill. Fetish. It's, like, such a... It's all gross. It's, like, ill, dude. Like... I mean, Erwin has their kinks, man. His is zombies. I don't know. I, I guess. <laughs> and to be fair, that's part of the story, too. Okay, so when yeah. it starts out, he's like, super into zombies. He's obsessed with them. It's kind of his kink, right? But to be fair, yes, she ends up being a zombie. You know, whatever. But he actually does, to be fair, he does actually fall in love with her before she dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's something that's also kind of, you can say, sweet about it. That if you watch the story, you know, you'd have to watch it. But basically, it starts that, yeah, he uh, his pet dies. He is trying to find a way to make this potion and revive it. He meets this girl. And that's why it's called Sanka Rea, by the way. That's her name, Rea Sanka. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they... they that her name's backwards for the title. Or, I don't know. Whatever. Because she's dead. I guess. Anyway. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. The point is, um, yeah. So he, um, he's trying to revive his cat. He's trying to use some, you know, magic or whatever, some, some experimenting or whatever. And he actually meets this girl. And even though he's like really like recluse and doesn't really like, talk to people, he's kind of weirdo. It is kind of sweet that he really does open up to her and she really opens up to him because she's very abused and like, oh my God, that's another thing we'll talk about in a yeah, moment. It's so, oh my God, yeah, no. She comes from like a really bad household and that's where she's trying to run away and stuff. And it is kind of nice how they really do bond over just, you know, just not really enjoying their lives and zombies a bit. They kind of think of the, the idea of zombies is kind of cool. And, you know, she likes that, you know, he, like, respects her, I guess, and, like, talks to her. I mean, he's not that great, but, like, at least he's not as bad as her dad, I guess. <laughs> he seems more normal in comparison, you know what I mean? And, yeah. I don't know. Even though he's, like, a weirdo. The point is, even though he's a weirdo. He has some morals. Um, she, yeah, and she still appreciates him for who he is, being a weirdo and everything. Mm-hmm. And same thing with him, where even though she's supposed to be, like, this rich girl and perfect or whatever, I guess he just treats her like a normal person, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it's always kind of sweet that he does seem to kind of have a crush on her before everything goes down. Uh, but yeah, then that's when she dies, unfortunately, because she drinks the potion. It doesn't kill her, but then once she dies, it revives her. And then that's where we get to like the weirdness that okay, this girl that he knew from before is a zombie now. And so he like takes her home, and he's trying to hide her, and he's trying to figure out, like, yo, what's happening? Why is she alive? And only that, but like, um, just to kind of throw it out there, I think like after he kind of like take brings her home, she like loses a lot of her senses and her body starts to stiffen up because she's dead. So a big mm-hmm. part of it becomes how do I keep her alive? How do I keep her um, from decomposing? Yeah, for her senses to be like you know where, and that's where like the hydrogen of flowers come in and like all that stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting. So it's one part you know love story, another part you know zombie 
fiction about oh it's a zombie but you know it's alive and how do we keep it alive and we gotta use like magic and blah blah to like help her so oh no it's an interesting story it's like you know you never never really see this for zombies zombies use your thing where it's like oh it's a zombie kill it you know and Mm -hmm. it's like no it's a zombie and i I care for the person who is the zombie how do i keep them alive how do i keep them from you know decomposing and losing all their their um the other thing too like if they remain zombies too much they lose control of themselves and do become the zombies from movies who like you know eat flesh so it's like Mm -hmm. how do i keep her human basically Mm mm-hmm so I would say that's kind of the interesting thing. Like he was so into zombies and the idea of zombies, like from fiction, like the ones that do eat brains and go around attacking people. And when he finally gets to meet a real life zombie, he instead is spending the time. How do I keep her human? Basically, mm-hmm. that's kind of the ironic twist if you think about it. Yeah, because he he has to like realize like if not like. He likes zombies, but it's like, bro, like I'm just gonna end up getting killed in the end. If- yeah, I know that, but she'll end up getting hurt too, you know. So it's mm-hmm. almost like, yeah, I guess that's the ironic twist that he always was into zombies, but he finally met this girl and fell in love with her. And when she died, it's like, how do I keep her human, basically? Mm-hmm. So that's an interesting love story. It's a romantic comedy. It's a zombie story. Very interesting. Um, like what I was saying, though, there's some weird stuff to it. Like obviously. Um, there's gonna be like some fan servicey stuff, which honestly, I, it's not as bad as other ones. I think the fan servicey stuff kind of fits because yeah, the specific it's, characters and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fine. You know, they're dumb teenage boys, so of course, you know, whatever. Um, uh, the, the the two things that I think kind of are really awkward though that I don't like. Me neither. Number, yeah, I number hated one, it. I get it. They always try to like you know a, lo- a love story can't be. They can, but they always try to throw curveballs into it. They try to throw drama into it, right? Mm-hmm. The way they do it here is that they have, uh, he has a cousin. Uh, her name is Renko. And she's kind of like in love with him and kind of like obsessed with him. So they do that annoying thing where like the whole time that Chihiro is trying to spend time with like, Rhea, oh, his cousin is there and interfering and getting in the way and like the whole, I know that you like him you know he likes you or whatever but you know you're gonna be my rival and i'm not gonna let him go that easy i hate it it's yeah. so dumb when they do that anime because it gets so obvious i mean it, not always but there's a lot of times where it's so obvious that the main character and you know the main heroine let's call them it's so obvious that they are going to end up together. Or they should end up together. And if they do like each other, maybe even if they're like a bit shy about it or whatever, they haven't realized it yet. But the point is, you know, it's super obvious to like everyone that they yeah, should. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's always this character that's like, ah, I, I don't care if like, you know, you two should be together because I like him. So you're going to have to like, basically, you know, you're going to have to get through the meeting, you know, get him. Yeah. It's and so they just stick out like a sore thumb where it's like, where is your integrity that you're fighting for someone that obviously doesn't like you? Like it's ah, uh, it's just I don't even want to get into it. But it's one of those anime tropes that always like it just really annoys me where the person ends up feeling like a weird third wheel and they end up feeling like where's your integrity that you're like oh I'm not gonna let him go that easy when like you know he doesn't even like you. Like, it's just really bad. Yeah, it was just uh so yeah, so the cousin game in the way is pretty annoying. Honestly, the I cousin I just thing's pretty that. weird too. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like his first cousin, so it's kind of like... Why, That's why a, it makes it even awkwarder. Yeah, first cousin. Yeah, like, like why, did they, just, why like, did they just make it like his... his You know, the, why did they just go the usual route? Like, oh, it's like his childhood friend then. Yeah. But yeah, it was so... That's why when like I saw that, I was like, oh, hell no. Because I was just like, that's kind of, you know, gross. Because it's kind of weird, because it's not even like cousins like, oh, yeah. Like, you know, it's like a far off cousin or something like, like, like not direct, you know, or something because no, usually it's, that no, is... it's just, it's literally his direct cousin from, you know. Yeah. And, then, like... and realistically you would think like, oh, maybe it's like she lost interest after she found out they were cousins very little. Cause that does happen too. Yeah. Where like, they don't know until they actually find out they're related that like it breaks the, um, how do you go? It breaks the glass immediately type of thing. And no, they kept it. They're like, yeah. Ever since then, she just kind of like found this weird appreciation after thinking he was weird, and she just likes him again. Like, okay, like what the hell? Yeah, and then the other thing that I did not like, thank you. I like it in the sense that he makes a good antagonist. 
Mm-hmm, he does. So, okay, I like it in the sense that he makes a good antagonist. And in a way, okay, the worse the person is, the more you root for them to, like, you know, you know, for them to lose, I guess you could say. And what I'm mm-hmm. talking about is that Rhea's dad is really super over controlling and overprotective of her. And mm-hmm. so, in a way, that's kind of a good thing in the sense that, okay, so the fact that she's getting away from all that and they're fighting against that, he makes a good villain. However, they. This is where the stupid twist comes in, yeah. Not even like the twist. They just made him a little too creepy. Like, you did not have to make the man that creepy. You just made him, oh, he's overprotective. He is, uh, uh, what do you call it, overprotective. He's over controlling of her because, uh, you know, I, it's a thing, people. You know, he's rich and he thinks he controls, he owns her. They could have just mm-hmm. stopped it there. Instead, he's yeah. overprotective. He's like, over controlling of her because apparently she looks a lot like her mother. And so he's like, obsessed with her. He's mm-hmm. obsessed with his daughter because she looks too much like his old wife. Almost to the f- point that it gets kind of like incesty. Like it's creepy. It's nasty, yeah. There's even like a, the um, well, it says right here too, but yeah, it, like it's just really yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna like you can watch it if you want, and like there's this trick, you know, just warning, it goes in a weird direction. And like, like I said, like, okay, at least they get it. Because, yeah, that makes him a good antagonist. You want to see him defeated. You want to see them rebel against him. You want to see him lose. You want to see these two kids for their relationship to work. Because screw this guy. But then they made him, like, too creepy. Like, it would have been fine if it's just, like I said, oh, he's a rich guy and he's controlling. But, like, no, don't throw in, like, the weird incesty. He's obsessed with her because she looks like her mom and, like... Uh, who knows like where it would have gone if she hadn't like died and turned to the zombie and in fact you know like the, the plot had like happened and just thinking that is like really gross yeah and then what makes it weird is from what i remember based off what they do to show what the mom looks like what's awkward is the fact that the mom looks like she's not even like like they say supposedly i think if i remember correctly like she's supposed to be 15 when he met her but she doesn't even look 15 she looks like she's like 10 or like 5 Oh god, yeah. Yeah, so that makes it even worse. And it's like, what the fuck? Uh, Like And then I'll just say I'll just say it here. That way you guys have a total whether you want to watch it or not. Um, in the end, the other thing that really pisses me off, and this happens in a lot of Japanese, you know, media, Mm -hmm. did they kind of forgive him? Oh yeah, it pisses me off too. Yeah. Like basically the main character just goes, I'm gonna use talk no jutsu to tell you that you're a crappy dad and you just stop what you're doing. And then the guy goes, oh, Okay, I guess I should stop it. Well, you're free to like, you know, uh protect my daughter and she'll live with you. Uh peace out. I'm gonna go see if I can find a cure that's a little more um permanent. Oh, but you know what's even stupid? And it's like, it's did that, you, it's did you ever, it's like, but, but like, so you, did you, you ever like, are all good now? But I guess yeah. they're good now. It's like after every creepy thing he did, I guess they're good now. Yeah. And especially because I was even going to say for some dumb thing too, he doesn't even say like, oh, I'm going to protect you for like, like protect her. Like, like kind of like, like, like he's your, she's your girlfriend or your wife or whatever. He, he, he's like, protect my daughter in the meantime. So like that yeah. makes it even weird because it's like you you're basically saying that he's not like you know you don't move on or try to move on you're basically treating her like like nope she's gonna like I'm gonna take her back one of these days and I'm gonna continue the same tradition as always. I mean maybe that's the point we don't really know because like yeah the wording's weird is the point like yeah it's implied it's a... that maybe he kind of got to his senses and was like you know you're right uh you know I can see that you know you guys have like a thing going on i guess i should step back but the wording is weird enough that yeah we don't really know what his deal is it's just like oh i guess everyone's kind of good at the moment Mm -hmm. uh uh, let's just brush that under the rug and you know i don't know (laughs) um so yeah so it is like i said it's an interesting story it's a good it's an interesting love story, interesting zombie story. It's not the usual thing you see like i said usually zombie stories are oh it's a zombie kill it or whatever this is interesting it's like what do you do if someone that you had you know kind of formed a bond with dies and they turn into a zombie and you're trying to you know keep them from going total zombie mode you know it's kind of interesting and like i said it is there is some sweetness to it where like you see that he really did have a bond with her before she died and so the ironic twist is that now he like needs to like 
stop her from going full zombie, even though he's like super like obsessed with zombies. So that's kind of like a, a twist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, it has its cute moments. It has its funny moments. It has some interesting like zombie lore and you know unique stuff for the genre. Blah blah blah. But like I said, dude, just gotta gotta throw it out there. Uh, there's two things that I think kind of ruin it. Number one is the fact that cousin's there. She's a really weird, awkward third wheel. Don't know why she's there. I wish they she wasn't there. It just makes it like really stupid. Mm-hmm. And the other one is the dad. He's an antagonist. You want to see him defeated. You want to see them rebel against him. But just the whole treatment of him as a character is just really weird. Like, I don't know what the deal is there. It's just like mm-hmm. it, it kind of makes the story really awkward in certain spots too. You know. What I mean? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, out of you know, like a ten, I would give it like a seven. Yeah, that's six, what I was gonna say too. Like a seven, like or a like... six, like anywhere from like six point five to a seven. Yeah, around there. That's what I was gonna get. Out, like a seven for. Um. Oh, and the last thing I want to say is that it's so weird because I don't even remember how I heard of this anime because I've never heard anybody talk about this anime ever. It's one of those oh, anime wow. that, like, yeah, I've never heard anybody mention it. I've never met anyone else who's ever watched it. That's some trying to share it here. I don't even know how I discovered it. It was just one of those things where, like, I- I've mentioned it before. My journey with anime has been so weird where I didn't start with, like, oh, I'm going to watch, like, all of, like, the normie stuff and then move on to, like, weirder stuff. Like, I have been all over the map where it's, like, my first one was, like, my first like one that I tracked down myself was like Bleach. Then I jumped over to like Death Note. Then I watched that one that I forget what it's called, but it was something like the our love story in this little planet about the girl who like herself is like a weapon. Then I jumped to like Fully Cooly. Then I jumped to like this. I want to say and like I've been all over the place where like I did not like start with like the, the 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 shallow end i just like jumped into like the deep end of like weirdness you were just everywhere basically when it came to anime yeah i don't even know how i got this one i just think like, i don't know maybe because it's made by um studio dean yeah maybe like because oh i like studio dean what else have they made and maybe that's how i ran into it mm-hmm. or maybe because i had watched this other one called um corpse princess which also has to do with not zombies oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it has to do with also like supernatural like undead warrior schoolgirls. and so maybe i like looked up you know something else like that kind of had to do with it and for some reason this was suggested i don't know but yeah somehow i just discovered this at some point watched it and so it stuck with me that like it's weird but i recommend it you know to an extent i think it's it's interesting you know yeah that's that's the thing that happened with me where you know obviously i feel like me it was more of the normal side where it was obviously like the typical kids stuff for you you already know like dragon ball pokemon all that stuff but then what made it weird was when like suddenly i just like found out about Ursa and like other stuff like that and that's really like, it, tur- it started turning for like the weird side and so everyone would be like yeah I'm a- like i would be hearing people talk about certain animes and then randomly i would be like yeah i've heard about the anime and everyone would be like how do you know about it i'm just like i don't know i just know about it and that's <laughs> nice. it nice, so nice, i nice. i just happen to be like a secret like like a closeted we basically where i just knew about a lot of stuff you know oh wow that's funny mm-hmm. so yeah i mean I guess, you know, we've had our weird anime stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. All righty, but that's it for now, guys. Uh, that's going to be the end of our podcast. But hopefully mm-hmm. we mentioned some stuff that you guys are into. Hopefully some stuff for you guys to check out. That sort of thing. And like I said, look forward to next week. I think next week is going to be when I'm probably going to do my big anime you know, winter 2023 roundup. So look forward to that. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. That's going to be it for now. If you guys like what you saw, like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Give us your feedback. And we will try our best to be back next week. This has been We Rabbit and The Legend of Jonathan. And we are out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.